Hello, my name is Matt Max. Welcome back to Let's Build Diaries. Today I want to talk about the topic of electronic circuit simulation. Again, I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't have years or decades of experience with electrical circuit simulation. So I will talk about my experiences from the viewpoint of a hobbyist, right? Does it actually make sense to use electronic circuit simulation to, you know, build an 8-bit computer? Uh, does it make sense or not? So what actually is electronic circuit simulation? Well, it allows you to simulate your circuit. So you draw a circuit and then you can run a simulation. Basically, there are two different kinds of simulation. There's analog simulation and digital simulation. Digital simulation is something like this. So this is QUCS, quite universal circuit simulator. It can do analog and digital simulation both. This is an inverter circuit. It has six inputs, two outputs, and you know, it generates this, which is a truth table. So you see all the inputs, all the outputs, and you can see whether or not this circuit behaves exactly like you want it to behave. So you can check whether or not the logic actually works. That is good. That is really helpful, you know. The first step is you actually need to check whether your logic works or not. Because if it doesn't, well, then it doesn't make sense to build a prototype. If you like it colorful, then you could use this software. This is actually um, something a viewer suggested. It's called Cedar Logic. It's kind of nice because everything that's active actually gives you a red line. So I can, you know, toggle uh, toggle my uh, control lines right here. Those are all my control lines. So I can, you know, switch. In this case, it's not. In this case, it's and. This is an addition. You know, this is or. And then I have my two inputs, A and B, both four bits. And I have my output over here, which is actually, which is an actual number, which is nice. But there are also binary outputs and stuff like that. So it is very helpful, right? It's nice that you actually see immediately where the problem is because it's colored. And there definitely is a place for that. I can definitely see why there's a place for it when we're talking about really complex circuits. I mean, this, you know, is not that complex, but the more complex it gets, the better it is to make a simulation first before actually building it by hand because you can see all those little errors right away in programs like this. That's really helpful. So, okay, a digital simulation tells you whether your logic works or not. That's good. No question about that. And you can just play around with it before you actually start building something. That's good as well. But it does not really give you a picture of reality. What you see there in your circuit simulator is not reality. Because reality is really complex. In reality, you have actual transistors and you, you know, you have actual electrons going around in your circuit. And there are all kinds of different things happening that are not simulated in a digital simulation. A digital simulation does only simulate two things. So logic and the delay of your gates. So every gate in there has an actual delay. You can say, you know, this gate has 5 milli uh, nanoseconds delay, this has 10 nanoseconds delay. You can actually uh, define that, right? That is simulated. But that's the extent of the simulation. More complex issues that have an impact on your build are not simulated at all. For example, this simulation doesn't tell you that you need a pull-down resistor on inputs that are unassigned. Or that you want to be zero, right? Digital simulation doesn't tell you any of that. Because it's only concerned with the logic and with timing. So, while it's nice to have, you cannot rely on it. Now, on the other hand, there is analog simulation. Analog simulation is way more complex than digital simulation. Analog simulation has actual models of the actual transistors doing their thing. And of all the chips that you use, it's using actual models and really complex math to determine what's actually happening. In fact, this really simple circuit that I have over here in QUCS, that took about one hour to simulate with an analog simulation, if you can believe it. And that's a really small circuit. So if you have a big circuit, it takes even longer. And I have a pretty beefy machine. So it is very complex. And that also is kind of its downfall. It needs to be very complex because reality is very complex, right? In order to properly simulate reality, it needs to take into account a lot of different little things. 
So the simulation in of itself is very complex. But if you want a complex simulation to be precise, you need to give it the right information. If your information is off, then the simulation doesn't work anymore. Then simulation does not give you reliable results anymore. And the more complex your simulation is, the more information you have to give it. Right? So if you actually want an analog simulation that gives you a picture of reality, right? then you need a lot of real detailed information. This information is called a model. So basically every ship, for example, every IC has a model. The model is, well, a model of how the IC actually works in the inside. So it tells the simulation, you know, what is happening on the inside and how to model it. So that the behavior of the IC in the simulation is approximately the same behavior of the IC in reality. But that means that you need an actually good model. You need a model that is actually precise and that has all this information in it. The best place to get those models are the manufacturers of the ships. However, here's a problem. A lot of manufacturers bring out their own simulation programs. For example, LT has a program called LT Spice. LT Spice contains really good models for LT ships and not for ships of any other manufacturer. And you are not allowed to share those ships because uh, you're not allowed to share those models because that would be copyright infringement. Because those models are obviously copyrighted by the companies who wrote them. That means that it's really difficult to actually get a working simulation of your circuit. Because you need good models and getting good models for everything that you use can be really difficult. And even if you do, even if you do, setting up an analog simulation that actually gives you the information you need and that actually gives you a good result takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. And in the end, even after you did this analog simulation, you put all this work in, you still cannot really trust your simulation 100%. No electrical engineer and no hobbyist, right, says, yeah, the simulation works, it works, okay, let's go to production. Th that's not how it works, right? And as a hobbyist, you too shouldn't say, yeah, it works in simulation, I'm just going to order a custom PCB and solder it all in place. No. What you do, of course, is you build a prototype anyway. Because you need to make sure that it it actually works in reality with the components you're using. You need to build a prototype anyway. So if you need to build a prototype anyway, does it even make sense to invest all this time and effort to get an analog simulation to work correctly? In my opinion, not really. I can definitely see why you would use digital simulation. It gives you truth tables and you can make sure that the logic is, works out, right? That's really helpful. But I don't think you get around actually building a prototype. You need to build a prototype anyway. So you can just skip the analog simulation completely because although this might look complicated, this is actually really easy. It's a really simple circuit. It's just a couple hundred or a couple thousand transistors. It's not the new Intel i7 whatever way of billions of transistors that you need to simulate. It's not that expensive to build, it doesn't take that much time to build, so it's not worth the effort to actually make an analog simulation, in my opinion, to make sure the prototype works when you actually go ahead and build the prototype. My name is Max. thanks for watching this episode, and tune in next time.